Okay guys, so here will be a review of the NZG Hitachi Zaxxas 1000K. This is the three-piece demolition excavator. Very nice model, it's probably one of the nicest excavator models I have in my collection. And to start off the review differently on this one, since there's so many different functions that the machine has, um, I figured that I would show you them right here. So. The boom raises on the machine, it would only go to around right there in real life. The jib, or I like to call it, uh, can go straight up for some height. It could also come completely down. And the stick can come in and the stick can go out. You could also put it in any other position you want really but for this review I'll keep it like uh, pretty much like this now uh, there's some really cool things about this model that I like and there's also some other things um, that aren't so good one of the things is the glue that holds the flexible hydraulic hoses in kind of rots away and it's really not a big problem but right now I don't have any glue, so that's why for the review they were kind of off. But you could just fix that with some glue, so it's not really that big of an issue. The only thing that I don't like about the model is the undercarriage. As you can see right here, is not wide at all. And you would think for a machine of this size, and especially the attachment and the conditions that it works and you would think that the end of the carriage would be wider and it's not I really don't like that about the model not really big takeaway but another thing I really don't like are the pads aren't that wide so not only is the end of the carriage not that wide but the the pads are very skinny the track frames could come off so I guess that does add a little bit to it but I'll get to that later in the review so on the body of the machine, it's very nice looking. Uh, you can see it right here. My favorite thing about it is probably the colors of it. So the tracks roll very smoothly. Um, it's hard to roll them on this paper, but they roll very smoothly. They also have a, a tensioner. It's hard to hold it, but they also have a, a tensioner and the idler and they're metal as well NZG does give you extra track pads uh, I've yet to actually use them because I haven't broke mine yet because mine is a shelf model like all should be but um, they don't look like they could break that easily if you put it in the dirt and rock and, and play with it like a, a Tonka toy yeah it's probably gonna break uh, but they're very detailed I like that they're not so glossy as well. Even though they do have some shine to them, they're not that glossy, and I think that gives them a very nice look. The frames on the end of the carriage has the steps, and also has the rollers, and a cool thing about it is the rollers up top actually roll. Um, I don't know if, if they actually roll when the track's moving them, but if you put your fingers over them, they will actually roll. And the drive motor also has a fair amount of detail to them. The same thing for the other side. If you look right there, you can see those two jacks. And they're screwed down. And what they're for is to jack the machine off the ground. And I don't know if you could tell, but there you could see it a little bit better. Uh, they will actually hold the model up since they're screwed down. And there's two on this side and two on the other side. And you could unscrew the tracks and take the the track frames up off to display the model in a uh, transport position. How you take the track frames off is basically just unscrew that screw right there and that screw right there. Not those. If you look, you could kind of see them. It's right there and right there. And they just slide right out. I think that's a great feature. You always see everyone comparing this model to its rival, which is the Hitachi the WSI Hitachi 870 because they actually are the same machine so it is fair to compare them and I, I think that this model is better because it has better features to it and there's other things that I will uh, show you as well 
So one thing, another thing that I dislike about it, but doesn't really take away from the model, is these catwalks here. And I researched a real machine, which works in Japan. I know there's a plenty of them, and the catwalks are like this on the real machine. So that did try to kind of change my mind, but. Um, it still didn't stop you from buying it. They have these spaces in here. I don't know why they have that. Maybe it's so the catwalks fold up. But I don't really like how it looks on the machine. Anyway, um, they're plastic, but they're fairly detailed. And you also have a catwalk on the front of the cab. Now, the cab here is very nice. You can see it has cab, uh, overhead cab guard and uh, cab guard on the front window. They're plastic, unfortunately. Does it really matter? No, but it's a review and I figured that I would say it. Uh, inside of the cab detail is pretty good. You could barely even see into the cab, so I don't really think it thinks it matters. I don't think it matters. If you've seen the shadow, you could kind of see more of the cab. The body, very nice. Uh, pretty decent job done by NZG. Nice paint, paint finish. It's all metal. All the handrails are metal. This door right here actually opens. It's kind of hard to open, and I actually thought that it was going to break when, when I tried to open it once. But then it shows the inside of the body, and it is, it is very detailed in them. In there, I believe that's plastic, but the door, as you can see, opens on a hinge. And what I like about it is, even though the hinge is noticeable, it it's not like every time I look at it, I know there's a hinge there, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's very nicely tucked away more the decaling over here and the counterweight now the counterweight has another cool feature but one thing that I really didn't like are these handrails up top here and I'm still debating whether to take them off I own this model for it's probably just around a month a little over a month I got it for Christmas I ordered it like two weeks before Christmas I don't really like the way these handrails look. I guess it's just me. But I'm still debating whether to take them off. The reason why I don't want to take them off is because I don't want to wreck any of them. Because I'd rather have the model the way it came from the factory than customized. But uh, the counterweight is very nicely made. Uh, the decaling on it is nice. A cool thing about it is you could actually take these weights off inside it. Um... It's, it's very hard to do once they're in there. You actually have to flip the model upside down, which I'll try to do. It's going to take me too long. I won't do it. And I got it. So these are actually, this is actually the counterweight. There's four separate pieces. And they basically just go into lugs. And to drop them in, you basically just drop them in like that. There's a bottom, there's an upper, and then there's the two inners. And I don't really see them doing much to the model in weight-wise. Um, but it's a cool feature to it. I'm, I'm sure it does a little bit because they, they do have a decent amount of weight to them. But it really doesn't do much. Another thing about the counterweight is if you turn it upside down there's two screws right below the weight which are right there and if you unscrew those I did it last night and pull the counterweight up the whole thing will come off which I think that is awesome you don't see too many model excavators with removable counterweights and I think that it it just adds a whole new feature to the model. I hope that they continue to make excavators like this. It's This model really breaks down for transport very well. The, the track frames, the boom comes off, and the counterweight. It's, it's really a nice model. The right side, which is my favorite, and I'll get to that in a second, has the vents here. They're not etched out, etched through a little bit. And over here, not really too much detailed. Now going on to the upper part of the machine handrails here are metal even the mirror is metal uh, metal catwalks has the anti-slip texture has more anti-slip texture up top and then going to the upper deck of the machine you 
you could see very nicely detailed, a nice balance of color also if you look at it. There's an, a lot of uh, the black and the orange I think goes very well together. Um, it's Like I said, all this stuff it's etched slightly through, not etched completely through. You got some pumps over here, I don't know if you could tell. And you got all the hydraulics that go onto the boom, which is the next thing that I'm going to get to. So now, the boom is the reason why I got this model. Um, if anyone hasn't noticed, I don't have the WSI 870, and that's the, the standard excavator of this machine. And I don't have that because I don't really like the model. As crazy as it sounds, I know everyone else likes it. I'd rather get one of these, which has the cool-looking boom and the crusher and the track frames come off and everything like that for pretty much the same price. And if you notice on mine, some of the lines are starting to come off because the glue's rotting or deteriorating, whatever you want to call it. I could just glue that back. There's really no problem with that. The only problem I have with the hydraulic lines is this one that connects the, the adapter to the actual boom is it's not long enough or it's shrunk or something because it used to fit maybe it's that I, I keep them not in the heat but uh, on my ceiling not on my ceiling but close to my ceiling and all the heat heat rises I don't know why but for some reason the hydraulic lines uh, seem to come off a lot I'm gonna take these off because I have to show you the boom now the adapter is very nice you can see it's got the flexible lines running from the car body over here. And what I like about it is it has these little caps for the cylinders. I think that's very cool. Raises. Uh, since the boom is so heavy, these cylinders right here kind of sometimes they sink if you got the boom stretched out. Um, but the cylinders themselves are very detailed. You can see it even has the two horns over there and the swing motor. Um, the adapter really isn't that crazy. There's really not much to say about it uh, along with the rest of the booms. It has the casted lines in the back, but uh, this is where it starts to get cool over here. So, if anyone else knows, or as you know, they also make the high reach version of this machine, and it uses the same base model, and that's, this allows the model to change its booms and they give you these two pins and the boom will come right off the machine and that's how the machine looks with the boom off it and here's the boom and the way it goes on is it just goes right in um, there's the little uh, I don't know what you want to call it there but there's a little tab right there and you basically just put your pins in um, I put mine in on opposite because it seems like they're not long enough, not like it's going to really fall out, but it's just the habit that I have. And then you just connect the hydraulics, and I'll do that after re the review. Now the jib, which I call this piece the jib because it gives them the machine its reach, is decent. Uh, it's just a boom. You know, I, there's really not much to say. There's dual cylinders to lift and raise it on the bottom, and they got the lines running to it, and then there's a cylinder to curl the stick or to bring it in up top. And here's the stick right here. It's got the hydraulic warnings, not the hydraulic, the, the warning labels, and it's got the hydraulic line over here. And you can tell the nice thing about it is the pins are very small. That they're actual pins, they're not rivets. Uh, like you could tell and you, you could barely even see some of them aren't even painted you you can't really tell now my favorite thing on this model which is the at the attachment which is a processor is right here uh, now the cylinders are originally orange and they painted them and that always caused the, the paint the chip so that's why there's orange coming through but the attachment spins a full 360 the jaws close, and the nice thing about them is they're tight, so you could pose it with uh, something in them if you want. And actually, uh, oh, forget that. But um, it's very nicely detailed. If you look at it, it also it's also got the pens in them, which is nice, and it opens very wide, probably maybe an inch and a half, two inches wide. 
spins a 360 and what's cool about it is it's actually got a little lifting eye on it if you look up top right there now the range of movement is perfect on it comes in nice and far and then it, it curls it curls out I, I wish it would curl out a little further but I guess that's why you got the the curl on the stick and the jib and it's got the lines on the back of the stick running to it so as you can tell a uh, very very nice model definitely recommend it what I do wish that they would do is release a bucket for this model because it, it even though with the boom configuration it can still have a bucket on it I wish that they would release the bucket for it it retails for 212 I know where to get them for 198 with free shipping at everyone if anyone wants to know let me know and I'll tell you um definitely worth every price it's one of the nicest excavators I have in my collection it's nicely detailed I would choose this over the WSI 870 because WSI 870 is like 180 and for 20 bucks more you could get this and you get a shear and everything which is very nice definitely worth it with the boom configuration and everything I'm also going to have the review up of the high reach version I bought them as a set I think they definitely must have demolition models and I'm glad that there actually are more demolition models out there on the market and thanks for watching the review